So what's in the name? Would a rose by any other name smell as sweet? Probably not. Picture this. He's moving like a tremendous machine. And we're not talking about Secretariat, but we're talking about Hoof Harden. <laughs> he probably wouldn't get as many chills and he probably wouldn't end up on the cover of Time and Sports Illustrated. Who farted? Who farted on the outside? It's close. Who farted in the winner's circle? The naming of thoroughbreds has always been pretty interesting. The Jockey Club does have guidelines and you can check those out at registry.jockeyclub.com. But to sum up some of them, for example, the name cannot be more than 18 letters. That includes spaces and punctuation. So if you were hoping to name your horse supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, it's not gonna happen, LOL. Which by the way, LOL, you can use either, unless you spell it out, which actually somebody did. They named a horse LOL. But LOL begins to stride away as they come to the finish. The last laugh today will go to LOL. But there are other rules as well. For example, you can't name a horse after another living person unless the jockey club has written permission. For example, Gronkowski. Uh, you can't name a horse uh, after a grade one winner who has won that grade one within the past 25 years. And then there are names that are permanently locked down like Hall of Famers, uh, Eclipse Champions, Sovereign Award winners. We're talking about horses like Secretariat, Man o War, Northern Dancer, Top Sires, you can't name a horse after a, a horse that's become an influential titan of the breed, so to speak. Basically, what can you name your horse? You know, you can name your horse pretty much anything you want, so long as it's not offensive, so long again as it is not beyond 18 letters, and if you have permission from somebody famous that you wanted to name your horse after, you're good to go. Some people like clever names, funny names, like there were two horses, the wife doesn't know and my wife knows everything who happened to actually end up in the same race together. My wife knows everything. The wife doesn't know. They're one, two. Of course they are. My wife knows everything in front. To the outside, the wife doesn't know. My wife knows everything. The wife doesn't know. My wife knows everything. More than the wife doesn't know. So you also have owners who like to name horses after things they themselves do outside of racing. For example, you have Clairvich Stables. That's Seth Clairman. He's a very successful businessman uh, in hedge funds, investments, and he has horses named Bricks and Mortar, Digital Age, and Cloud Computing. What's really fun is when you can look at a pedigree and you see names that generationally fit with a theme. I'll give a great example of that. There was this Mayor Knight's daughter. She was bred to Prince Quillo. She produced Roundtable and she produced a filly named Monarchy. And so you've got this whole great King Arthur feel, right? Well, Monarchy, as a broodmare, produced a filly named State. Well, State, you could think a territory, but they went on to think of State more as the verb, and State produced narrate, narrate produced preach, and preach produced pulpit. So you've got a fun thematic line like that. Some people like to just name their horses combining a sire and dam's name. For example, Ali Sheba, by Aladar, out of Bel Sheba. Another example of a great thematic sire line would be Mr. Prospector. Mr. Prospector himself was by Raisin Native, but then he was out of Gold Digger. So you kind of get the sense of why they named him Mr. Prospector. Well, Mr. Prospector, that theme of his name continued on through Sun, Smart Strike, and then there was Gone West. And Gone West has a son named Mr. Greeley. And Mr. Greeley was named after Horace Greeley, who started the New York Tribune, and he also was credited with coming up with the phrase, go west, young man. And there's a tie-in to Mr. Greeley with my racehorse, and that is authentic. Authentic is out of a daughter of Mr. Greeley. I'm a huge fan of when a horse has a single name, a strong name that evokes a sense of nobility and majesty. And I think Authentic is such a wonderful example of that. And he is a son of Into Mischief. You know, Into Mischief, we all know what a fabulous sire he is, but people had question marks about distance and class. Well, Authentic put the exclamation point on that for sure, proving that his sire is indeed Authentic. Even after Authentic won the Kentucky Derby, people had questions about well, can he do it again? Can he get a distance again? And sure enough, he beat older horses in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Again, proving his name, authentic. He won the Derby, he won the Breeders' Cup Classic. He's authentic indeed. So when people ask, you know, what's in a name? Well, I say, simply put, everything. <laughs>